Hi, I'm Hannah. Thanks for watching. Okay, welcome back to my um, YouTube channel. I'm Hannah. I am a knitter and a mom, and I live in North Carolina with my husband and our son, and I love knitting. <laughs> I um, also designed some knitwear for kids. I just had a pattern launch um, last week. And so I, yeah, I haven't been on here recently. It's been like two weeks almost. Um, we were at the beach for a week with my family, which was very nice, very special. Ollie had a blast. <laughs> he got to do a lot of new things. Um, if you're local or if you're kind of in the the southern part of the United States, we went to the Outer Banks, um, which has just like a lot of fun stuff to do. Um, national memorials and um, giant sand dunes, lots of mini golf, lots of ice cream. So it was very fun. And then last week I launched my pattern and so I didn't release a video. So I'm back. <laughs> I have lots to um, talk about today. Actually, I have finished objects, new works in progress, and some new acquisitions to share with you. Um, so maybe I will have a longer video today. We'll see. I feel like I invited you into my house. <laughs> this is like a new angle, I guess. I'm not used to seeing like the staircase and everything. Um, but anyway, let's get started. So my first finished object is my blanket. Um, if you have been following along, you know I've been knitting this for a while. If you're new, I did the prison, Pearl Soho Prism Blanket Knit Along. They very kindly sent me um, Goodwill for this project because I love Goodwill <laughs> and um, it's just so so woolly and warm and but it's light too like oh it's just so nice so yes this is my blanket I don't think I can get it all on the screen <laughs> um, but my colors were inspired by spring and kind of like a cherry blossom where you have the tree and the, the clouds and the sky and the different colors of the flowers and um, so I started this in January and I just finished it up like a week and a half ago I was a little behind the deadline I've talked about how I um, have not done a knit along before and I've never made a blanket before so um, I actually finished the knit along and um, I was like four days late maybe which I actually am pretty proud of <laughs> Um, for completing this blanket, but I love it. It's on the couch um, and mostly I use it, but Ollie really likes it too. He likes to snuggle up in it. He calls it mommy's blanket, which yeah, I did make it, but it's for everyone. Um, but yeah, I just, I'm really excited to have something that I made that will keep us warm and we'll have hopefully for a long time. Um, yeah, after I blocked it, it grew a lot. So the squares are supposed to be 11 by 11 and mine ended up being closer to like 14 by 14 which is great because then it's bigger and I didn't have to knit quite as much. I made the smaller size which was crib sized but I don't have the finished measurements but it's pretty big. <laughs> okay anyway I could keep talking about this because I just really like it and it's kind of different um, having all these different colors in here it's different than like my usual like knitted object I guess but it matches like our mantle is this pink color and we just have a lot of like pink and gray in the house so yeah I really like it and I'm really happy with it and I'm gonna keep it on my lap because why not I just it's so light like that I couldn't really tell when I was knitting it but I think after blocking it I don't know like wool is amazing right <laughs> I don't know, it just lightened up so much, and so it just feels so good when I have it on. Okay, that's my only finished object. Okay, I had this unfortunate situation where I was making a second sample for the pattern I launched, um, my rainy day sweater, and um, so I finished it when we were at the beach, and the dye lots that I used were so different. Like, it's not salvageable. I was so emotional about it because I... Like, didn't have, since we were gone, I couldn't come home and get more yarn to make another sample. I was just really had my heart set on having two picture, two samples for the pictures that I took because, um, like, okay, this is a sidebar, but pictures do better when there's people in them, right? People want to see people wearing the sweaters, even just in general, like, people want to engage with, with the people. So, 
patterns do better when someone's wearing them or modeling them. People, one, want to see how it looks. Also, they want to see how cute your kid is in the pattern. So especially for kids' patterns, it's important. I don't usually use my child in the pictures because most of the time he's not interested in wearing the sweater when I want him to wear it. And I don't want to force him to do it. Also, I want to respect, you know, his privacy and um, like, I don't know, his personal desires. And so I don't make him wear it. And anyway, I was so disappointed because I thought having two sweaters would like make it do better and people would be more interested in the pictures. And then it was just not, it was unsalvageable. Like the color was so different for the second skein of yarn. So I, I just like left it. I don't even know where it is. I, I brought it home and I was so sad and I just put it somewhere because yeah. So check your dye lots, people. <laughs> Make sure you have the same ones. Um, I could like over dye it, but I just loved the first color so much. And like, I, I know I have the ball band somewhere, so I could find it, go back, but like it's, I made like a small size, so it's not gonna fit Ollie. I just, it was sad. So I don't have that finished object today. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it just doesn't work out. But I did get one picture of Ollie wearing the sweater because I asked him if he wanted to try it on. He said no, and I said, okay. And then later he went and he felt it and he said, ooh, it's soft. And so he put it on, or I helped him put it on, but, um, and he wanted to wear it around for a little bit around the house. So I got a couple of pictures of him wearing it, which I think are very cute. Um, and some for myself of him just having a blast wearing his sweater. He said, what did he say? It was warm and soft, which is like the best, right? <laughs> um, I used Cascade 220 Superwash for it and the color's Irish cream in the picture. Anyway, now I have a new work in progress to show you. I am doing a test knit. I, this is my first test knit of the year and it's May. I used to test knit almost exclusively because um, it's an easy way to get a jump on the next season's patterns. If you like want to, like if your test knit starts in July, you could be knitting in July for a sweater you want to wear in October instead of the pattern launching in October and then you have to knit it immediately and super fast. So I like that aspect of test knits. And then I also like getting a free copy of a designer that I love their patterns because a lot of designers offer that for compensations. But since I am running my own test knits and doing more design work, uh, it's difficult to keep up with a test knit deadline for me. So I have not done one in a long time, unless I like small projects, so maybe I'm trying to think the last one I did. I don't know. Anyway, I always wanted to apply for them, but then I'm like, no, 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 I shouldn't. All that to say, I did apply for one. Wow, it's the same color almost as this. This is the Queen's Cami test knit for Tori of Tori Knits in NYC. I think it's her handle. And um, I'm using this yarn, which is Echo View Fiber Mill. Sadly, they shut down and the yarn is discontinued, but I have this in my stash. It's um, Oh man, well, I'll put it in the description box. <laughs> it's a tinsel and um, wool blend. It's a 50-50 tinsel and wool blend. So it is so light and soft and beautiful. And the color is Argonite. Yeah, it's lovely. I have a pair of socks out of this that I accidentally felted in the washing machine. But <laughs> I'm going to redeem that with this. I modified it to have this Pico Edge um, the pattern itself just has a straight edge, but I um, I think it's supposed to be kind of like a layering piece because she calls it a cami, I guess, but I think mine will be maybe more of like a statement piece just based on the color. So I like the Pico Edge. I got it um, approved, <laughs> um, but I like that Pico Edge just for a little bit more, but I kind of want this to be like a t-shirt now, something I could wear like all the time, but I think it will be beautiful um, regardless. So I cropped it a little bit um because i don't hardly wear anything that's full length um anymore just the style the times i guess the pants i have <laughs> um 
yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna get this out of my stash, which like I'm excited because it's so beautiful. I think it'll be nice to have um, this in it and I could wear this with like a, a cream shirt or a white shirt. Like I have a double gauze shirt button up and I think that would be so cute with this or a sweater. Um, but I'm knitting it so fast because I just wanna see how it like works out because it's it has like A-line shaping, but there's, um, well, I don't wanna ruin it because it's a unique pattern. So I'm sure she'll talk about the details um, soon. And I think the pattern's gonna come out in maybe mid-June. Tori gave like a month and a half, so like maybe six, six weeks, six or seven weeks for like a tank top. So that felt very doable. And she's offering a extended time frame for a certain size and above. And so, yeah, I was like, yes, I believe in that. I will, I will do that. I know designers have to, you know, do turnaround times and they want to launch patterns and they want to launch them for the right season. And I totally get that as someone who, you know, also designs a very small amount of patterns. Like I can see how that is important. And sometimes it just, you have to do the shorter time period, but I love when designers are able to, to give just that long time. I just love when a designer does and they say, this is important and I want you to be included. And so I'm giving you a certain amount of time or a longer amount of time. Okay. Off my, <laughs> off my soapbox. Um, I'm still, I'm knitting on this right now because I just, I really want to see how it works out. Um, but I'll put it away so I can finish talking. <laughs> I've talked about this a lot. This is my first cardigan by Hive Knits and it has a sleeve. This sleeve is the longest sleeve of my life. I usually don't like subscribe to the whole like sleeve island thing. I don't mind knitting sleeves. I usually knit them two at a time and I don't know, for some reason I just don't, I don't really mind knitting sleeves. But this sleeve, I think because it's the half fisherman's rib and it's in the round, it um, just takes a lot of time and focus. And basically you're knitting one by one rib twice for the length of one stitch. <laughs> so you have to knit, you know, everything double and there's no decreases. So it's a very wide sleeve. Um, it's a little bit short right now for, for the length I'm hoping for, but yeah, I can see it's a little short. But I have just seen, I was on Ravelry looking at people's projects to try and see how many they, how many rows they did. So anyway, to see how much it would grow because I don't necessarily want to block it before just because I, it will take a long time to dry and I want to be able to knit on it all the time. So I haven't, I haven't like got the sleeves on yet or the stitches on for the sleeve yet, um, but I'm one step closer. I know I won't be able to use, to wear this for a long time but I kind of want to like take cute pictures of it and stuff and, and I'm really excited. I feel like this will be in my closet for a long time and that is my current goal. Yes, sleeve one is done. Let me know, are you a sleeve island person or do you enjoy knitting sleeves? I wouldn't say I like enjoy knitting sleeves, but I don't really mind. It's just part of the process, I guess, to me. This sleeve <laughs> took me a minute. I told myself, um, after I finished the sleeve, I was like, okay, I went down into my stash and I said, I am finding a worsted weight or above project and I'm going to knit myself a stockinette sweater. And like, I just, I haven't knit a lot of that since like last year, I guess. Like I've been doing like textured or designs, um, or sample knits that are like fingering weight. Um, and so I went down in my stash, I found the yarn, but I just haven't found the perfect pattern. Um, yeah, so I'm on the hunt for a striped sweater pattern and um, I'd like for it to be worsted and above. So if you have a favorite, let me know. I'm, um, I don't know, I was inspired by Haley from um, Knit Weekend. She talked about in her kind of knitting trends video from her recent trip to, um, where did she go? She was in Bergen and maybe Stockholm maybe don't quote me um anyway she was talking about just all the strict sweaters and so i yeah i really want one um so i have some knitting for all of heavy merino in my stash and some single merino that i'm gonna hold double um so yeah let me know if you have a striped pattern that you like okay, now for my acquisitions um let's see where do i want to start 
Okay, this was um, sent to me. Sorry for the rustling. This was sent to me um, by Pearl Soho again. They have another knit along it's to make this bag. And they reached out and asked if I wanted to participate. And I said, yes, I would love to. And they very kindly sent me two of the Blackbird linen that it's knit in. So I have the colorway Natural Flax and the color Queen Anne's Lace. So there we go. Um, I've never used this yarn before. I don't have a lot of linen like in my wardrobe or in my stash. So that will be exciting to try 100% linen for the first time. And the bag is this dumpling bag. Very cute, kind of perfect for the summer. I think um, the other, the, um, they just put the knit along on their um, Instagram maybe a couple days ago. And so you can see all the details if you wanted to participate. I think if you sign up, you get like a, um, 20% off code for the yarn. I don't have any like affiliation or, or anything. They just um, sent me sent me some yarn to participate. Um, but yeah, I, I am really excited to knit the bag. I honestly like had in mind that I wanted to knit a bag. I plan to just use stash yarn. And so maybe I'll make some more. <laughs> I'll make like a winter one or something. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna make, make some of those. So you'll see those on my feed soon. I think the knit along starts maybe June and then it runs through July. I don't, I don't really know, but I, I don't think it'll be hard to, to meet the deadline because this has 175 yards and it uses most of the skein. So not a lot of yardage and um, highly motivated to make a bag for myself. So, okay. The last acquisition I have is, I don't know if it really counts. It's for a sample knit. So I just sent off yesterday, two days ago, Monday, whatever day that was. Um, I just sent off my uh, kind of a big sample knit project and um, now I'm gonna get started on this kind of smaller one that I'm really, really thrilled about. I, when I when I got this like request, I was like, oh my gosh, I, I have to say yes to this. <laughs> and I probably didn't have to, but I really, really, really wanted to, guys. Can you see this? This is like a dream come true to me. <laughs> I have had my eye on this book. I love knitting like little cute stuff. I usually do like the Barrett Woolco patterns. Um, I think it's just a great way to work on your skills, learn new techniques. And um, I don't know, I kind of like the small um, seamless, I don't know. I just really like knitting them. So. Anyway, I'm knitting quite a few of these little guys and their clothes. <laughs> um, I'm making this guy, who's the main main character in the book, um, and his, his clothes. And then I'm also making, let me find them. <gasps> yes, the sheep. She's adorable and her little fluffy vest. Okay, so I'm definitely going to be talking about that and maybe I will need to make myself one. <laughs> and each one just keeps getting cuter. Like, I think they might have picked the cutest ones to make um, in this little piggy um, in his little cabled sweater. Ah, oh my gosh, Nana. Okay, I'm not making Nana. I'm not making Nana, but I might have to make Nana because she's so cute in her little dress and her feet. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, yeah, so I'm only, I'm only making three. Oh, these are so cute. Oh, that one's not as cute. Okay. Well, that's adorable. And I, I didn't know if I'd want something so intricate. I like the Barrett Woolco ones because they're not quite as intricate as these. Um, and so this will be nice to know if I need to buy the book for myself or if I'm, oh my gosh, look at the sheep's dress. Okay, wow, this is um, adorable. Nana, wow. I know what I will be making for like, I don't, I don't know if Ollie would like these, but I just think they'd be cute for like seasonal stuff like to have 
some little ducks around and but this is for La Mercerie. I'll be knitting it with a lot of, it looks like um, just like different um, their stash yarn, I guess, like just some different odds and ends. Um, so that's nice to know too, that if I make them, I can use just like my, my stash. And there's some, um, ooh, I like this color, oatmeal some um full skeins so i can't wait to show you guys these this might become a um little stuffed animals only video for the next couple of months but um oh wow that's pretty what is this rhubarb rose um but that's okay i i feel like a lot of my viewers do knit for like little people or if they have like grandkids or kids um and so yeah i will i will let you know what i think of this if you're, if you're new here, I do sample knitting um, on occasion and basically you get the yarn and the pattern and then you make it and you send it back and they pay you for that. And so, um, yeah, I won't get to keep these. So I don't think I can bring them out around Ollie because he might get attached to them and that would be heartbreaking to have to say goodbye um, for both of us. So yeah, I'm gonna have to keep these like closed up in a bag, like in a cabinet or something when he's awake. Um, but I might have to make him one. I think he would like, um, I mean, I really think he would like all of them. The pig is funny. The goose though, he does like geese. He likes ducks too. I mean, he likes all animals, right? Like kiddos just love them all. The sheep is so short. That's so cute. Oh my gosh. They have like little personalities and like little stories and stuff to go along with them. Like this is a dream if I, I mean, I don't, I don't see myself doing this, but like, I, w I would love to like, you know, make designs like this and write little stories for each of the little people or like the little animals and, and talk about them. Like, so I'm gonna be making the sheep and it says, um, I, I don't know how to pronounce her name, maybe Aggie? Aggie lives on a tiny island. It's only a part-time island and this is why she loves it so much. She thinks it's like a magical creature with a superpower. Once a day at low tide, it unfolds into a wild, quiet, and huge land where Aggie can walk for hours. She scrutinizes the sand and the little pools in search of treasures shaped by the sea. Then the swell of the ocean is back and her land folds up again into a tiny island. And then it just like goes on for a few more paragraphs about her life on the island. And I just think that's precious. So anyway, catch me making these cute little guys over the summer and um, I will let you know how it goes. But yeah, I don't think I can show Ollie because I couldn't bear it if I had to take it away from him. <laughs> that would be so sad. Before I go, what I'm wearing. I am wearing the Monica Geller tee by Sorry Nordland. It, um, it has these lovely set in sleeves. This was my first time doing a set in sleeve. I was amazed that you could do short rows on a sleeve and it would give it the perfect like little cap sleeve. Let me stand up so you can see. Um, mine is cropped length, but I think I knit it, I think it's knit from the bottom up. And then, yeah, this looks like, wow, I can't even find the seam. I'm actually kind of impressed with myself there. I mean, I made this a long time ago, like two years ago maybe. Um, and before I had like, you know, knitting, <laughs> before I found knitting YouTube, knitting Instagram, all that. Um, so yeah, I, I'm really happy with it. I don't wear it a lot because it is pretty warm. Um, but I told myself I'm going to start wearing it. I wore it the other day. We, my mom and my sister and her son and my son and me, we took the boys, um, on the Amtrak to go on like a little adventure. And so it was like their first time riding the train together or just in general. And um, it was a blast. We took a very short trip and went and to get coffees and walk around, went to a library and the boys had a blast. They um, loved the train. And so anyway, I wore this on that adventure because I thought, why not? And it was wonderful, except for it, I had to walk a lot and it was kind of hot, but it's okay. I mean, like it's fine. It, I, it wasn't a big deal. Um, I'm trying to get better about wearing my summer knits because I just struggle to wear them. So 
Anyway, this is made out of Mungo, which is um, Rosa Pomar. It's a recycled wool cotton blend. And I believe it's a DK weight um, or worsted weight, honestly. And so, yeah, it's, I, I'm wearing it next to skin. There's a little bit of like prickly. I anticipate it would wash, it would soften with more washing, more wear, um, but it doesn't bother me. Like I'm still wearing it next to skin, <laughs> but I think it's just like the way the cotton is and it's recycled and, and all of that. So I would definitely recommend this yarn. And um, yeah, it's just pretty unique. I, I, I don't know, I like it. Um, but yeah, like maybe two years ago, I really, I wanted to make a summer knit. And this I think was my first summer knit. And um, yeah, I saw it was like the Monica Geller and oh, I have an end I need to cut off. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, I some, some people on here have said that um, I remind them of Rory um, Gilmore which is a huge compliment and I love Rory. And so, yes, but also in, in my life, I have gotten Monica Geller as well. Maybe less of a compliment, I don't know. <laughs> but when I saw the tea, I, I had to get it. So if there's a Rory Gilmore tea out there, I would love to make that. Um, but for the time being, I have my, my Monica tea. Um, anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble. I feel like I rambled a lot because it's been so long that, um, you know, I've been able to talk, talk about my knits. So I hope you have a lovely weekend and happy knitting. I will see you next time.